12. In a quarter mile, turn right onto South Kipling Parkway. Turn right onto South Kipling Parkway, then slight right. Take the next right toward West Ute Avenue, then continue straight onto West Ute Avenue. Continue straight onto West Ute Avenue. In a quarter mile, turn left onto West Buckhorn Road. In 800 feet, turn left onto West Buckhorn Road. Take the next left onto West Buckhorn Road. In a quarter mile, your destination will be on the right. Your destination is on the right. This is where Dylan Klebo lived. This area here. This is the area where Dylan Klebo lived. I'm gonna go back to a 
his house, I'm just driving around the neighborhood, to show you the childhood home of Dylan Klebold. Cougar Road. Cougar Road. Now there was a gate earlier, assuming that over here that they lived you can't see the home from the road but assuming assuming we lived somewhere down one of these homes down here But I could almost assure that Dylan Klebo and his friends would hang out, maybe on those rocks. It's home somewhere over there. I'm going to take you back down. So I'm taking you to the home of Dylan Klebold. Dylan Klebold was one of the shooters at the Columbine. This is the neighborhood. This is the neighborhood where Dylan Klebold lived. Cougar Road. And I'm just gonna try to give you a perspective of you know the environment where he grew up outside. We don't know what actually went on inside the home. I'm going to take you to his front gate of his home. I'm put my seatbelt on. But it's it's beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful area to live for sure. I'll put my seatbelt on. We'll get moving. here or is it here 9351 yeah 9351 9351 okay so yeah his home is right here we'll just go over here of Dylan Klebold, Columbine shooter, right there. I am 
here. There's actually a barn across the street. Oh. But look at this area. like that is the home up there. I believe the mother and father divorced in 14. Susan and Thomas Klebo. The gate is open. I'm sure that Dylan was on those rocks. I mean, these guys did pure evil that day in Columbine or evil and you're praying for the victims and praying for everything you know just the community of Littleton Columbine you pray for all that and I'm sure the neighbors know about the Klee Bulbs I, mean, I don't know their feelings but this is the neighborhood to give you a perspective you know you leave their house you go this way and he has big rocks outside his home but yeah what they did was horrible and you know it was 20 happened in 1999 his neighbors it's sad well, April 20th you know, in April 20th and around them, a lot of, you know, bad things have happened. I don't know if that played a part in it. April 20th, as we know, that is anniversary days. There's been other types of things that have happened around there in that time. I'll kind of take you out here, maybe see a creek or something. But yeah, you would. So yeah, I went to show you where Dylan Klebo lived. Lived at the time, kind of nice creek down here. Hi, how are you? Bicyclist. So again, praying for all the victims. I'm Jonathan Lee Riches. Subscribe to my channel, share. A lot of times, you know, I'm, 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 I like to report on true crime. I like to know about the environments of how these bad people grew up in, where they grew up. You know, I, I post a lot of videos. Um, at the scene of crimes, at the scene of perpetrators' homes. You know, I speak for the victims, support victims. I'm just trying to give you a perspective of who these people are and why they, you know, did it. We'll never understand. That's a nice house up there. It's a nice home up there, isn't it? We'll never really understand why they did it. You know, uh, I believe that uh, Dylan Klebold's mom wrote a book. Um, maybe I'll try to talk to her. I don't know if she'll want to talk, um, but yeah, so subscribe to my channel. You know, I put a lot of this type of content out there. This might be interesting to some, some it's not. You know, obviously you didn't see me trespass on, on, on the property. I don't recommend anyone go on the Klebold's property, you know, stay on a public street and, you know, obey the law. And, you know, now you know the kind of environment that they grew up with. I think that mass shooting Columbine was probably where mass shootings got into 
the mainstream of what's going on and there's been numerous since you know at schools and it's a tragedy not even schools but places of businesses and um, workplaces I mean it's it's it's, it's scary thought that that type of evil exists and stuff like that don't support it in any way uh, pray for victims of all crimes so out in the neighborhood of Dilling Cleveland everyone be safe Jonathan Lee Riches aka JLR so I just pulled out of the neighborhood of Dilling Clebo. I am on my way to the childhood home of Eric Harris Eric Harris is the other Columbine shooter it looks like according to GPS that Eric Harris lived eight minutes away from Dylan Cleveland so this is most likely the route that Dylan would take to his friend Eric's home and vice versa if Eric went to Dylan's home assuming that they both went to each other's houses we could probably assure that they that they did. This is the route. So I'll just keep it here until we get to Reed Street. I'm going to Reed Street, Littleton, Colorado. So Clebo lived back there, you know, in the foothills of the Rockies, like the beginning stages of the Rockies. Now it's more flat land here. So in a half a mile, I'll be turning up on left on 121. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Colorado 121 North, South Wadsworth Boulevard. And I'll also drive around the neighborhood of Eric Harris just to kind of show you how, you know, the environment that he grew up in, the neighborhood. Turn left onto Colorado 121 North, South Wadsworth Boulevard. Continue on Colorado 121 North for one mile. And then 1.1 miles west Chatfield Avenue. That's where we're looking to turn here. GPS, this highway above me is 470. 470. Reminder that this tragedy happened in April 20th, 1999. So we're talking 23 years ago from this date. Over 23 years. Just across 23 years. I'm assuming up here at the red light here, we'll be turning right on Chatfield. In a quarter mile, turn right onto West Chatfield Avenue. I read that Dylan Clebo and Eric Harris were seniors in Columbine. You see the infamous pictures of them wearing trench coats. Take the next right onto West Chatfield Avenue. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto South Upham Street. All right, so. See, 
McDonald's. Wonder if that McDonald's was there at the time. Got a Walgreens. Take the next left onto South Upham Street, then turn right onto West Alder Avenue. So, this looks like a development called Columbine Knowles. Columbine Knowles. Turn right onto West Alder Avenue. In 800 feet, turn right onto South Reed Street. Okay, so we're approaching. This is the neighborhood of Eric Harris. They put their seatbelt on. All right, so we'll be turning onto Reed Street. Take the next right onto South Reed Street, then you will arrive at your destination. Make a U-turn, then turn right onto West Alder Avenue. We are looking at Michael Singleton. It is. Take the next right onto West Alder Avenue, then turn right onto South Reed Street. Looks like this is it. I will figure this out. It was one of those homes that... Take the next right onto South Reed Street, then you will arrive at your destination. Confused there. Alright, so this is You've arrived. Somebody there. That's the home. I don't want to pry, but that was the home. That was the home. That was the home of Eric Harris. I don't want to, you know, be nosy because the Harris family do not live there anymore. That was the home there, and this is the neighborhood. I don't want to bother that neighbor because it's, you know, asking him how he feels to live in that house. I'm sure they get questions like that a lot. This is the, this is the neighborhood of Eric Harris, Reed Street. It's confused there because it said South Reed and then Alder, but that sign was backwards. That's why I turned there. All right, so let me know what you think. Let me know. You see, these homes are different than where Dylan lived. These are more of like a residential neighborhood with sidewalks. I see a little store right there. Eric Harris, another uh, shooter with Dylan Klebold. Dylan and Eric, and they killed 12 people, including a teacher. And then they were dead. So, you know, it's a tragedy. Mass shootings keep happening. There you go. So, justice for the victims. Everyone be safe. And uh, subscribe. And I will share more. This is just giving you a kind of a perspective. Alright, so I just left the neighborhood of Eric Harris. So now I am going to 
Turn left onto West Chatfield Avenue. Let me show you how far Eric Harris lived from Columbine. So it took. Uh, Dylan Klebold lived that way towards the mountains. Eric Harris lived here. And now we're going to Columbine as soon as these cars pass through. Give you an idea on how far Eric Harris lived from Columbine. In a quarter mile, turn left onto South Pierce Street. So, Harris lived in this neighborhood here on the left. It's like it's a... Probably most likely an HOA neighborhood. It had its own division name. You see the fencing. Turn left onto South Pierce Street. Left. Turn left onto South Pierce Street. This is South Pierce Street. Continue on South Pierce Street for three miles. And over there would be Eric Harris's neighborhood. We're leaving that. What's it say? Deer Church. Deer Creek Church. So this is probably the most likely route that Eric Harris and Deep Dylan Klebold took to go to Columbine. Don't know if the same businesses that you see in this video were there back in 1999, but you see what goes on and what the area looks like now. Shopping center. I see a line of liquor store. I see Anytime Fitness, Columbine Center, Nails, Dairy Queen. We're still 1.8 miles away from turning left. We've got a 7 Eleven here at the corner. That looks like a recent built 7 Eleven. Red light, this is the corner of uh, Ken Carl Avenue and Pierce Street. Ken Carl Avenue and Pierce Street. Sushi restaurant. shopping center there on the right. Coal Mine Avenue. Just cross Coal Mine Avenue.
In a quarter mile, turn left at West Fair Drive. Take the second left at West Fair Drive, then your destination will be on the left. Columbine High School. Destination is on the left. So people are playing tennis, it looks like. So we've got tennis courts here. Looks like you've got a park here. I'm actually gonna get out and uh, walk over and pay my respect. great summer. So this is where it happened. They got class of 98, 99, 2010. Yeah, empty. Okay. So, what has been learned with this tragedy? I don't know if they have metal detectors. I mean, I'm still. But what has been learned? Sympathy, you know, preventing these type of things from happening again. But I gave you a perspective. I'm going to um, actually go around this way. So, outside Columbine, paying respect to the victims. We say no to mass shootings. We say no to these type of events. Why did it happen? What has the school done to prevent copycats from happening again and bad things that you know, there, there's bad out there. You know, since 1999, there's been other mass shootings just happened uh, recently. 
you last week in Uvalde, Texas. Uh, we had Sandy Hook. There was a STEM school shooting here in this area. I mean, this goes back to this goes back to Columbine High. Why are there mass shootings going on in the Denver area? You know, Denver's had a lot of mass shootings in the Denver area, so you know, let me know what you think. Hopefully, these things stop. Hopefully. You know, there's a debate whether people should arm teachers, metal detectors, you know, or is the root even more deeper, you know, with, you know, fatherlessness and isolation and video games and online violence. So, Jonathan Lee Riches, everyone be safe. Say no to school and gun violence.